Welcome back to Green is Good. This is the Go Green edition of Green is Good. And we're here in downtown Seattle and no more fitting a guest than Saphir Hamilton. He's the chief of staff for Seattle City Light. They keep the lights on here. Welcome to Green is Good. Well, John, thanks so much for having me. What a great event this is. Oh, this is a great event. And talk a little bit about what you came here to speak about today, Saphir. Well, I, I came here representing Seattle City Light and moderated a fantastic panel earlier today on what businesses are doing here in Seattle, but also nationwide and across the globe to promote green energy efficiency and, and sustainability in their businesses. That's great. And talk a little bit about, with, for our audience, your journey leading up to becoming Chief of Staff at Seattle City Light. We, did you grow up in a, in a green, did you grow up here in Seattle? Actually, no. I, I was born, interestingly, oh. on a uh, commune in upstate New York. Wow! And so my parents taught me, uh, you know, how to how to be one with nature and and all that, and that's uh, where I got this interesting name here. This was this was in your DNA and your 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 blood from the beginning. It was in my blood. Yeah, my wow. uh, my dad was a plumber uh, okay. growing up, and uh, he got into very early some of the geothermal and uh, energy efficient heat pumps, and uh, so he, I got the bug from him and uh, went into engineering so I could do what he wasn't able to do as a, as a plumber. But being born in a commune and growing up a little bit on a commune, you were already doing the circular economy, which has now just come to the greater you know, United States. That's right. It was on the fringe then, but I think it's you know, pop culture now. It is now pop culture. <laughs> so here we are in Seattle, and you just moderated this panel. And, and how did it go? Were you, were you excited about how the whole panel was received? I was excited. And I'll tell you, uh, what really gave it great energy was the entire audience was here to really learn and, and understand. I mean, you know, we talk about green, uh, but it means so many different things to so many different people. And the audience just had great questions. The panel members gave great experiences. And the energy was was really about, hey, we can we can continue to do more. And, and that was great to hear. That is so great. And that's such a great message for our audience in terms of sustainability. It's a journey and we can all continue to do more. It's never over. It's never over. And, and uh, it was interesting to see the three panel members we had uh, today. Uh, one was from Harley Marine Services uh, here in, in the port in Seattle. And you know it's an industrial organization, but they are investing money in, in creating LEED certified buildings. Even though they don't have to, they think it's really important, a part of the things. Starbucks, who's got a, a global you know, mission to be sustainable as well as serve great coffee, uh, talked about all the work they were doing and committed to uh, sourcing 100% of their energy from renewables worldwide wow. uh, and, and uh, reducing energy by 25% and, and what they were doing to get there. It was great to hear. The most impressive part for me was hearing about, uh, uh, from Rob Harmon, President and CEO over at Energy RM, this model that he created in partnership with uh, Dennis Hayes over at the Bullet Center to completely revolutionize how energy efficiency upgrades are financed. Mm. And, uh, you know, Seattle City Light's been in the conservation game since the 70s uh, because we said we don't want to invest in nuclear energy to meet our load growth, we'd rather invest and help our customers save energy. And to me, this is, uh, you know, we've been at that almost 40 years, and, and this new model has an opportunity to completely revolutionize how we, how we do energy conservation in the, in the United States. Sustainability is a top of mind issue. Yeah. And you're the chief of staff of Seattle City Light, and for our audience members out there that want to see all the green things that are going on in Seattle City Light, it's seattle.gov backslash light, seattle.gov backslash dot light. So, you know, talk a little bit about energy conservation and efficiency, and what does that mean with regards to Seattle City Light? Well, as I mentioned, uh, the entire industry uh, in, in, in utilities was built on generate power and transmit it to your customers. Uh, we were fortunate at, in Seattle, uh, our founders were visionaries and they built up our hydro resources so that we had clean renewable energy for almost 100 years. In the 70s, we faced a choice of, okay, do we need to build new power plants, and that's expensive. Right. And there weren't a lot more hydro we could build at the time, and so the question was, do we invest in nuclear power mm. or not? And as a publicly owned utility, uh, we're, we're here for our customers and we answer to our customers, and our customers said, we don't want to invest in nuclear power. And we'd rather invest in 
conservation and helping our uh, customers save energy so we don't need to build the next power plant. And so that was back in the 70s. And, and the, the vision and foresight of Seattle led the way for the whole country of, of getting into conservation so ahead of great. the rest of the country. Yeah. Instead of more nuclear and all that other kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. We've had Solar City on the show on uh, various occasions. What is the rise and the, uh, the coolness now of the whole solar revolution mm -hmm. done to um, Seattle City Light, and how do you now work with the, the whole solar generation that yeah. now is upon us? Yeah. Well, just like conservation, uh, solar and, and other renewables is something our customers want. And right. as a publicly owned utility, we give our customers what they want. And so we're, we've been supportive, long supportive of solar, uh, even in Seattle, where we don't get as much sun as other areas of the country or world. And We've innovated some, some things around solar as well with community solar. We were one of the first utilities to own and operate uh, community solar where the utility builds a community-based solar, maybe in a park or at a, a customer's location, and we give all of our customers the option to buy into that and be investors in that community solar plant. And then we do virtual net metering so that the power that is produced, they get that share credited on their bill. And so everyone, even if the you know you're in a multifamily or wow. um, don't have enough sun on, on your house, can participate in solar in a real way. So everyone is cheering on the solar revolution at Seattle City Light because they could actually be a real benefit for more solar happening to all the residents of, and all the users that, that, that buy their electric from you. We are, we're, we're a supporter. That said, the entire industry is grappling with, okay, what does this mean to the utility business model? Right. Because the more solar that comes on, uh, the more battery storage for, you know, Tesla's coming mm -hmm. out today with an announcement we think will impact uh, the utility industry with battery storage. Right. And controls, whether it's Nest thermostats or, or some of the controls we've seen. We think the, the entire industry that's been operating the same way for 100 years is, is going to be going through a lot of change in the next few years because of that. And so we can't just, business as usual is not going to work. And so we need to look at that. We're going to come back and talk a little bit about that change in a second. For our audience members who just joined us, we're honored to have with to Safir Hamilton, he's the chief of staff of Seattle City Light. To learn more about what Safir and his colleagues are doing, go to seattle.gov backslash light. Talk a little bit about the change. You know, we've had thought leaders on the show before, or energy specialists before, that, that their theory is that about half the energy that's produced in the world is wasted. Mm -hmm. So what we've seen now in, in, in part of the sustainability revolution here in the United States is energy management taking hold. And you mentioned just a minute or so ago the advent of Nest and other smart home devices and other smart energy management devices. How do you work with that whole part of the revolution to continue to reinvent your brand to stay ahead of the sustainability yeah. curve? Well, I think that's a great question, John. And, and every utility in the nation and the world is at a at a fork in the road. Yeah. Do we do we um, defend the status quo? Do we say, hey, we you know this is the structure we have, and we talk about stranded costs and fixed cost recovery, uh, and that's important stuff, and we've got to take it seriously and have a real discussion. And there's an, a real opportunity to engage in a discussion around, okay, well, with this technology changing, is it an opportunity for us to offer services to our customers, to partner with some of these technology providers? To, you know, as the nation's greenest utility, we've got a responsibility uh, for our customers to, you know, be proactive and say, what can we do to adapt? What can we do to give customers what they want? and still make sure that uh, we're able to, to pay our linemen to keep the lights on and, and, and do all of that. As the leading you know, green and sustainability you know, utility, all eyes must be on you in terms of how the paradigm is going to be reinvented. Well, I think that's what's really exciting here in Seattle. And we're in a fortunate place where, because of investments made 100 years ago in Hydra, we have the lowest power of any large city in the country. Wow. Um, you know, and, and that gives us some, some time to really think about and do this right. And so we're not in emergency mode like maybe some, you know, some of our peers in Hawaii, for example, where they've got a right. lot of sun and high-priced electricity. Mm. Um, you know, we've got some time to, to make sure we're doing it right, and we think uh, there is an exciting opportunity in Seattle to think about what does the utility of the future look like? How can we help lead the country in a, in a way that's going to be good for the bottom line and good for green and good for uh, our customers? Everything that I hear and learn and I feel here, it's a city 
you know, that foundation is innovation. I mean, not only do we have great companies like yours, Seattle City Life, but you have, this is the birthplace of Amazon and Starbucks and Costco and the home for Alaska Air, the number one most, you know, the greenest mm -hmm. airline in terms of energy consumption and, and things of that sort, carbon footprint. Greenest and best customer service. You know? Best customer service and, 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 and also services Fresno directly. So of course, we're very proud of that. <laughs> it seems as though this is really become not only one of the core hubs for innovation, but also sustainability, which then gives you an edge to continue your leadership role as the paradigm in public utilities um, uh, and, and are, is reinvented now yeah. and redefined. And that's what's so exciting. You know, for wow. us, it, it's not a choice between do I make the right choices sustainably or do I make the right choice for the bottom line. The, the two are the same, and, and you mentioned earlier, if we're wasting half the energy we produce, uh, you know, Alliance to Save Energy, who are, are uh, CEO who's retiring, Jorge Carrasco, was, was on uh, the board chair there recently, and the work they're doing is on energy productivity. This mm. is not about conserving or, or doing with less. This is about the economic engine that is crippled because we're wasting energy. And, and so if we can continue to find ways to, to put every uh, kilowatt hour to better use, um, that's not just good for the environment, that's good for the bottom line. And we're going to leave it at that today, Safir. You're always welcome back to continue all of the great messaging and journey that you're on and how you're redefining how companies, great companies, should be run. Um, and for our listeners out there to learn more about what Safir is doing with his colleagues at Seattle City Light, please go to seattle.gov backslash light. You know, Safir, you are an inspiring thought leader, a sustainability superstar, and truly living proof that green is good. Thank you very much for your time today. John, a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.